Hello and welcome to this presentation for WJEC Criminology Level 3. Today I'm going to be looking at Assessment Components 1.2 and 3.1 which relate to His Majesty's Prison Service. The abbreviation for that is HMPS. So without further ado let's crack on and delve into this in a bit more depth. So to start off with his Majesty's Prison Service is part of a bigger institution known as His Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. It's a government agency and it's responsible for the prisons in the UK as well as the probation service as well. But obviously HMPS is just responsible for the prisons whereas HMPPS is responsible for the prison and the probation service. So it's an agency of the Ministry of Justice it was created in 2004 and in 2004 it was actually known as the National Offender Management Scheme, so NOMS. So the Prison and Probation Service were under NOMS but um, it changed in April 2017 so for the past five years it's been His Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. When we look at the role of the prison service and we're going to leave probation service out of this presentation and we'll look at that in my next presentation. It's very important to understand the role of the prison service because later on uh, in some other assessment components you're going to have to assess whether the prison service does an effective job and in order to assess that effectiveness you've, you've got to know what it stands for, what the purpose of the prison system is. So here is a statement um, from gov.uk and this is basically the role of the prison service. So we keep those sentenced to prison and custody, helping them lead law abiding and useful lives both while they are in prison and after they're released. So when assessing the role of the prison service there's three things you need to be looking at. First of all, do they keep those sentenced to prison in custody? So you might look at how many escapes there have been from prison, because if they're keeping people locked up and no one's escaping, they'll be fulfilling that part of their role. If we are helping them lead law abiding and useful lives, both while they're in prison. So you're looking at their uh, things like offences in prison, uh, drug use. Uh, crimes committed by prisoners, assaults on prison staffs, prison riots. If a lot of that's going on then you could argue that law-abiding useful lives are not being lived whilst people are in prison and then finally you've got to look at law-abiding useful lives after they've been released so you would be assessing the recidivism rate to see how effective that is. So it's those three areas you want to be looking at when you're deciding is our prison system effective or not. So broadly speaking to summarise that his Majesty's Prison Service has three main aims, to protect the public from criminals, to help those who've been convicted to rehabilitate, to become useful members of society, and to carry out the sentences of the court system by holding prisoners securely. So pretty straightforward there. So I've pulled up this data for you um, and you can see here You've got the um, prison population, the government produces a report um, weekly, so you can check out uh, what our current prison population is. And I'll give you some idea here. So um, this is where it was on the 19th of June 2020. This is Friday the 30th of September, Ugh, get my teeth in. Uh, Friday the 20th, 30th of September 2022. And these, uh, this data is just the week before. So you can see in 2020 our prison population was 79,605. It's now up to 81,309. The male population in 2020 was 76,340. It's now 78,000. And the female population 3,265 in 2020 down to 3,179 in 2022. Overall population 81,749 in 2020 and it's 83,723 um, in 2022 and those are the people that are on a home detention curfew caseload so slightly down this year. This gives you a feel for how many people are in prison male and female in this country. So when we look at funding um, His Majesty's Prison Service is funded by the taxpayer as part as I've said already of 
His Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. In, 20 to, in 2020 to 2021, it received 4.6 billion overall, which was shared between prisons and probation, and the prison service received approximately 3.2 billion. Although the overall spending that we had on prisons was nearer 5.5 billion. So that will be building new prisons, capital builds, that sort of thing. So this then works out, this is a really useful stat to have, that in 2021, the cost to the tax taxpayer of keeping someone in prison for a year was 48,409 or 132 pounds a day. Now, when you think about any assessment you're doing on the prison system, it's useful to have this figure because the reality is if someone is in prison and they are um, costing us £48,000 a year, at the same time that person is not working. So if they're not working, they're not paying tax. So therefore, they're not contributing anything to the economy whatsoever. At the same time, they're not out in the community spending. And when they're spending money, every time you buy something where we have VAT on goods, again, you are contributing to the exchequer to taxes. So in reality, anyone who's in prison is not contributing financially in any way, shape or form to society. And is actually, if anything, it's actually just taking money from it. So the higher your prison population, uh, the more draining in money it is. So that's something to consider when we look at the economics of these things. Now, overall, the prison system deals with high risk offenders who are considered to be unsuitable to serve their sentences in the community. We've already looked at the court system. We know that there are two courts of the first instance, magistrates and crown courts. And we know that 95% of cases tend to be the magistrates courts. Magistrates have a maximum uh, uh, prison sentence of six months or a year for two or more offences. So the majority of these people that are in prison will have been held, um, will have come from the Crown Courts, longer periods of time, um, and they're higher risk. So they're not going to get fines, they're not going to get community sentence. They're severe enough to merit being locked up, being incarcerated. Um, and in the House of Commons briefing paper of the 8th of October 2021, we had the following statistics. We had 119 prisons and young offenders institutions of which 14 are operated by private companies. Uh, there's also one secure training centre that's operated by a private company. Now, if you want to go into a bit more detail, you can look at this research briefing. I put the front cover of it there, but that link will take you through to that. And this link here, if you click on that, there's an Excel spreadsheet. There's a link to an Excel spreadsheet where you can look at every single prison uh, in the country. You can look at how, uh, what its designation is, what region it is, what category it is, and what its primary purpose is. So if you want to do a bit further digging down, have a look at those two links and you might find those quite interesting. So moving on. Um, as I teach down in the southwest, this is for my students, but I've just uh, outlined all the prisons that we have down in the southwest. And this is taken from that Excel spreadsheet that I was uh, talking about earlier on. So you can see here are all the prisons in the southwest. Uh, there's the region. Here are the operators. So you can see we've got one private prison, all the rest are by the prison service. And here are your cats, uh, the categories. Interestingly, extra prison used to be a cat B. It's now reception prison. So within the last uh, three or four years, it has changed. So you can see the main cohort of prisoners held and its designation and then various notes, etc. So um, that's there for you to look at. And if you, as I said, if you take that link that I put in the previous slide, um, you can go to that spreadsheet and look for your area if you're interested. So over the page. Um, male prisons are organised into four categories in general. We've got our category A prisons. Those are for our most serious offenders, prisoners who, if they were to escape, would pose the most threat to the public. 
the police or national security. So those tend to be people convicted of murder, attempted murder, rape, terrorism, etc, etc. And we've got six such prisons in the UK. Examples of them are perhaps the most notorious one, HMP, Belmarsh and Wakefield. Um, the nearest Cat A that we've got to Plymouth is Long Larton in Worcestershire. And inmates include, um, for those in Plymouth, you all know who I mean by Cody Ackland. He's serving a life sentence, 31 years minimum, for the murder of Bobby Ann McLeod. You've got Nathan Matthews. He's serving life with a 33-year minimum term for the murder of Becky Watts. Um, and that is Long Larton Prison. That's what it looks like. When we move to our next category, which is category B, um, that's for prisoners who don't require maximum security, but for whom escape still needs to be made very difficult. So typically it's for those who've been convicted of the same types of offence as Cat A prisoners, but who, are, who aren't judged to be a such high risk. And sometimes if you've got a Cat A prisoner who served a long time and has behaved well, they might be moved down to a Cat B um, because uh, they're showing that they're towing the line. Now, Cat B prisons, as I said, extra used to be Cat B, um, but actually, you know, Cat B prisons include Manchester and Grendon. But the nearest one to us, I reckon, is probably Parkhurst on the Isle of Wight. I think uh, in terms of uh, mileage, that's probably the nearest one. Moving on to Cat C. That's for inmates who can't, who can't be trusted in open conditions, but who are very unlikely to try to escape. So it's for those who are typically convicted of minor offences, serving shorter sentences, no more than a few years in length. And category B prisoners obviously come to the end of their sentence, might be moved down to a Cat C to prepare them for release. So famous Cat C prisons, MP, um, HMP Northumberland, uh, Maidstone, but the nearest two to us are Dartmoor, and Channingswood, Dartmoor and Princeton in the middle of uh, Dartmoor and Channingswood in Newton Abbott. And there's Dartmoor looking very picturesque in the snow. And there is Channingswood not looking not so picturesque. And finally, we move on to Cat D. These are known as open prisons. And they are for prisoners who can be reasonably trusted not to try to escape and are given the privilege of an open prison. So category D prisoners are held in open prisons in which they are trusted to be able to move freely around the prison without risk and who after completing a risk assessment may be allowed to work outside of the prison in the community or may be allowed short home visits for a set number of hours a week. And that's housing Cat C prisoners coming to the end of their sentence, getting them ready for release. Uh, they're sometimes downgraded to Cat D to get them ready. And when we mean open prison, we really do mean open prisons. You know, we've got 13 of these in the UK. When I last did this PowerPoint, there were 11. So we've upped the number of these. And the nearest one to us is um, Lay Hill in Gloucestershire. But um, famous ones are Ford and Sudbury. So this is Lay Hill here. And as you can see, there are no fences, no walls, no nothing. It is a truly open prison. And um, when I was a kid, I used to live very near to this prison here, HMP Ford, and um, my mum was the church warden of um, a church, that was a Climping Church, which was right next door to the prison. And I can remember as a kid, the choir at the church on a Sunday was made up of prisoners from the open prison and they would walk from the prison to the church and then walk back again at the end of the service. So um, a totally open prison but they were expected to be there and um, at all times uh, had to report in a bit like being to school. You walk to and from school, but you're um, in the hours you're supposed to be in school. You stay in the school building and that's what the open prison is. So it's getting people ready for uh, for release, getting people ready for work on the outside. So a little bit and we will do this in much more detail in later PowerPoints on how um, we try and keep a little bit of order in prisons. And in Britain, we have the IEPs, Incentives and Earned Privileges, and they're rewards that prisoners can earn for sticking to the rules. And we've got three basic levels of um, three levels of IEPs. There's basic, standard and enhanced. 
So basic is where prisoners are actually moved down to basic. All prisoners start at standard when they come into the prison system and they can go up to enhanced or down to basic. So if they refuse to obey the rules, they lose privileges, they move from standard to basic, and that would be losing privileges such as no TV in the cell or meals are going to be eaten in the cell, you're not allowed to associate with other prisoners, that sort of thing. Standard, as I said, all prisoners start at this level, and privileges might include being able to spend more, mon uh, more money that they earn each week, something like that. And then enhanced, uh, for those who consistently obey the rules, they get privileges might include uh, use of TVs, more visits, more gym time, that sort of thing. And here I've just given you a um, something that I found on the internet, a little p a poster that was done by a prisoner showing what you could get if you are an enhanced prisoner. And it will differ from prison to prison. So you can see uh, three extra gym sessions per month if you're enhanced. DVD, DVD evenings put on once a fortnight. The option to buy games, consoles and a DVD player. Interwing game um, gaming events, um, options for super enhanced wings, extra library sessions, extra spends. So you spend a week that you can use in this prison shop, goes up from fifteen pound fifty to twenty five, and you get an idea of what enhanced means. So finally, as always, how the prison service liaises with other agencies of the criminal justice system. So obviously it works with the courts because it carries out the custodial sentences imposed by the courts. Uh, they will also supervise defendants who have yet to go to trial that have been remanded in custody. They've been refused bail. And at that time, they'll obviously have to allow visits by defence lawyers to their clients in prison. Obviously, they work with the police because they'll need to allow police to interview prisoners if there are ongoing investigations. They will work with the National Probation Service because they will liaise closely with them when a prisoner is to be released on licence or when they're coming to the end of their sentence. And finally, they do work with some charities and pressure groups such as the Prison Reform Trust or the Howard League for Penal Reform to try and improve conditions for inmates. So I hope you found that useful and um, I shall uh, catch up with you later on in another PowerPoint. See you soon.